Okay, for today's video, we are going to make a German air attack on this Allied base. So it's going to, each plane is going to take multiple runs and try to drop weapons. And um, it'll be somewhat random, random enough so that you can easily replay this many times over and just tweak things very slightly to give you different results. So a very usable, replayable scenario for the German air war. So since we've already explained how to fly your own aircraft in the game with, uh, I've got three videos on how to fly your own aircraft. Now this will be telling how to script an enemy aircraft to attack your base and make it interesting for you. So let's go to, we're already, let's go to the German side. Let's go to F3. So the Germans are coming from this airspace and they're going to fly down the map to the Allies. So we have three soldiers here for our planes. We're going to use a, a BF-109. We'll click that down and a JU-87 Stuka. So we click and we place them down. Then we go to F1. Uh, we grab a soldier for the BF-109. Takes one. Stuka takes two. As they get into the aircraft, uh, the next what we're going to do is we're going to take the aircraft uh, to altitude and get them placed in the air ready for the scripts. So then we go into F3. All right, pilots are in. Let's go to F3 and quickly get these into the air. Grab the BF-109. Um, first thing though before that I forgot uh, we should give them tags. You have to have tags for the scripts to work. So there's a hotkey. I forget what it is. Maybe W or something. I forget what the hotkey uh, is. But go down to where it says tags down here. This little thing down here. Hit that button. Quickly give it a tag of uh, BF1. Hit OK. Hit OK again. So it's called BF1 now for the script. Select the next one and give it also give it a tag. And we'll call this Stuka. Make sure you have no spaces when you write names for your tags. There shouldn't be any spaces in your fonts there. So now the Stuka and the BF1, we can see their tags green. Everything looks good. Let's put the Stuka in the air. Uh, let's go up to the top here. From wheel, shift it to airborne. And set an altitude of about 25. Make sure it, it, it's higher than the trees and just click, make sure it's on. You can use your Z key to rotate it, but the game, the script will rotate it into position, but just for the sake of clarity, we've got it rotated. Now let's do the, uh, the 109. Same thing from wheel to airborne, and we'll put a nice altitude of about 25 to start. Click on Z key to rotate, and we can move it to the side. Uh, you'll find that planes, if they're anywhere close to each other, they have the chance of colliding. So it's always a great idea to keep them apart. So the engines are on, they're ready to fly. They have fuel and they have soldiers in them. And they're already in the air, obviously, ready to go. Uh, one of the next things we need to do now is give them uh, waypoints. So for each one, setting your waypoints can be a little tricky. At least it was for me until I finally figured things out. Uh, there's a lot of gotchas in this editor, uh, little things that uh, may screw you up until you figure out how they're actually done. And one of the things that really I found annoying was the fact that uh, when putting down the waypoints they have to be done very you have to do them just right so let me show you how this is done just so you avoid some of the, the pitfalls so we're in F3 we got our planes 
grab the BF109, go down to the uh, waypoint marker here. Now we want to give it a name. Uh, so the BF109 is going to have its own set of waypoints. So add, give it a name, BF1. Keep all your names the same so that you know how, you know, what name they are for your waypoints and for your scripts, for your commands. So always keep the same name for each item or you don't get confused, right? So now let's do the same thing for the Stuka, select it. Oh, you have to, this is another little gotcha, just a little thing that can get you annoyed though. Uh, make sure that you go out of, to select the aircraft, you have to go back to entities to be able to select it. Now select it, then we can go back here for some reason. Maybe it's just a little work here. Well, let's let's try that. Maybe they don't show up there when it's selected. So let's just go back and create another one. Let's call it Stuka. It won't matter in this case. But if for whatever reason, sometimes you're trying to select an item and you're not in Entities tab, you won't be able to select it. So I just want to point that out. So now we call this set of waypoints the Stuka for the Stuka. So select the BF1, the first one we're going to do. And as long as you have this selected here, you don't necessarily have to have the plane selected to do this. So just make sure it's, it's orange here or yellow here. That's selected. Then hit Add. Put down a waypoint, which will be zero. Click down and then drag a box around that zero to highlight it and you see the round disk there. You have to do it that way. Then go to add again and put your second waypoint down. And we want to zoom to the other, we want to go right down to where a target might be, but we won't, we don't want the plane to be interrupted by trees and hills and, you know, the church tower. So Let's just have the first plane come right about, let's say maybe just to play it safe, let's go here. So that's our first, we went from zero to waypoint number one. Then go back and click, go way back here so the plane has to come back. A second attempt, it'll come back for good gameplay and it will fly back here number three and now back at to exit at four so we lay down actually one two three four five because of zero waypoints so in this last waypoint make sure it's still highlighted and that the circle is seen here go down to commands right click in commands and add a delete we want it to delete when it goes out of when it comes back if it's still alive. We want it to go off the map and not mess up anything and collide with anything else. Just give it a de delete command waypoint. You're basically saying on the fourth waypoint it will delete as it flies off the map. So to recap, each plane is going to have uh, I believe five waypoints. To take it to the waypoint where it's going to drop a bomb or strafe, which will be number one here in this field. It'll go back to number two, fly all the way back to number two, and come back to give us more gameplay or entertainment. Fly back to this waypoint three here, and then go back off the map to waypoint four, where this waypoint and the plane will delete if it's still alive. So now, We've done that. Let's do the same with the Stuka. Let's click Stuka, make Stuka live up here. Hit Add, do the same thing. Uh, before we do this though, well, we can do this later, but it's important to write this down and I'll tell you why later. But put down a waypoint, which will be five, because even though there, it's, it's getting its own set of waypoints, the game keeps the, all the waypoints numbered sequentially so it doesn't matter if this is a brand new set for the Stuka it's going to keep running the numbers that's why I'm going to tell you to keep 
track of all the numbers later. But So we put down the waypoint, just like last time. Now we have to select the waypoint. We have to hit Add again. Now we can start adding waypoints to the Stuka route. And this time we want the Stuka to fly maybe a little bit closer to the base here. We don't want it to hit the tower, but it can come in a lot closer. And you can put more waypoints to fly right around the tower or anywhere on the map you want. But I'm keeping waypoints simple here for to not get things confusing. So this number six will be the waypoint where it's going to drop a bomb or do some damage. Then we want it to fly back and seven and then come back and maybe take another shot possibly even closer to the building of the farmhouse eight and then back off the map but on this side at nine all right so we're done with our waypoints uh, except we have to at nine we have to do another delete waypoint as it exits on waypoint nine so make sure number nine is still selected and you add your delete waypoint. Now we want to look at all our waypoints. So go up here, show all waypoints. Write down that our starting waypoint for the first, for every plane you put in, you want to write down its starting waypoint and its um, bombing waypoint and its exit waypoint. That way you'll keep track for all the scripting coming up, which isn't that much, but it's you have to keep track of this. So let's just write it down here. I'm going to write it down on my little piece of paper. So for the BF-109, the start is zero. So I'm just write start zero and the end is four and the bomb run or the bombing waypoint will be one and then right next to it I can just put Stuka and its starting waypoint is five its bombing waypoint is six and its return exit waypoint is nine so now once you have all those written down there'll be no problem with the scripts okay so now we can back out of there and we can go to uh, the triggers if I haven't missed anything here and you want to make sure that all your waypoints have lines connecting them that they look like this when it's done to make sure you have it done correctly and if you know just remember that you have to highlight the first one and click add again just follow the way I did it and you won't have an issue Next thing we're going to do for each one now is go to the uh, triggers. We're going to create triggers for each. So add trigger for BF. So BF1, that'll be our first trigger. Add another trigger, Stuka, no spaces. So click on the number one, BF1. And what we want to do is we want to uh, give it its first command. So um, actually, before we start that, to save you some grief, and I found out after doing this that it's better to give it a delay first. Instead, uh, you know, I'll show you why later. But OK, so BF1, let's give it a add command. And let's go delay. And delay it, we'll have the first one delayed just only 10 seconds. You can change this later. So we'll go 10 second delay for the first one to start. Go to Stuka, add a delay, say 25 seconds. And all this is doing is delaying the script from running uh, right off the start. And um, that way you have your plane staggered and you can delay any amount. So you could say, well, you could have five planes attack right at the beginning uh, of the mission. Then you could stagger a few planes maybe uh, an hour into the mission, which would be, I don't know how many seconds, 600, 6,000 seconds, whatever that is. 
but you can set delays for every plane when it's going to run its routine, which is great. And you can change them for every mission, which will alter the mission a lot too. And as far as making things random, there's one other thing I want to talk about before we get into the actual scripting. Go back to your waypoints, and if you have show all turned on, one thing that adds a lot to the gameplay is your planes are going to come in and drop their bomb, and their first one is going to drop it at the first waypoint, which is this one. Now you see this green line circle around the waypoint. You can see that green circle around it. That's basically a radius of 200 game units. You can change this. So what that means is the plane's going to come in and it will drop its bomb or uh, strafe anywhere within this radius, with a, which only gives you a slight amount of uh, randomness to where it's actually going to. But in, in maps like this, you want randomness is good. That means replayability. You never write, you know, exactly sure where things are going to bomb. So what you want to do is make this radius way bigger. So you don't know exactly where each time you run it, it may bomb way over here. It may bomb way over here. You're not exactly sure. So select the waypoint you want to increase the radius to. Go to radius size here and increase that number. To, you know, to quite a bit, maybe 600. Let's see what that looks like. Now you see the radius circle is a lot bigger. And for our purposes right now, you know, if I was making a map, I might make these radiuses even bigger, maybe a thousand, just to give you that randomness. But that's good for what we're doing here. Now we know our other, from what I wrote down, I know my next attack waypoint is six. And let's also make that let's say 500. So now we have some randomness to where these bombs are going to actually land. And let, just to, because we're going to run this, let's, let's go to 800 and let's just see how random that number is going to work because we're going to test this when we're done. So you can see I, it should show up on YouTube but the green ring is quite big. It goes all the way around here like that. So it's a large disk area where it can actually bomb enough to get some randomness going there all right so that's something i wanted to explain now let's go back to the scripting tag here and our two planes uh, we'll start with bf1 highlight that we set the delays for stuka and that bf1 now let's create add another command down here and let's go with um, what we want to put down is actor to waypoint. So that's under other, I believe. Actor to waypoint. Click that. And what we want to do each time you do one of these, the first thing you want to do is set as tag, which we took the time to do correctly. So we're doing BF1. Go down here and select BF1 as the tag, hit OK. And then what we want to do is waypoint of, uh, so that's the tag, but then we want to do waypoint is starting waypoint. So that's the waypoint where it starts. And remember, we have them all written down, so we know this one is at zero. For the uh, BF1, its start point is zero. So put zero in there. And then, then this Approach tab, click Teleport and Rotate. So it's starting waypoint is zero, Teleport and Rotate, click OK. And now we have our actor to waypoint set up for the B, uh, BF1. Go to the Stuka, do the same thing. But this time it'll be even easier because when you add it here, whatever scripts you're running and had to find in here at the beginning are now put up at the top so you can quickly find them. So just quickly select that. Now do the same thing, add the tag which is the Stuka and go down like that and we want to click OK then we want to go to waypoint which we wrote down for the Stuka as being 5 for its starting waypoint 
and approach will be the same teleport rotate click OK now let's go back to BF1 and do the next one which now we want to do I believe it's under actor we want to do an air state we want to tell the aircraft what state we want that in again hit the selector to go to the tag and click and tell it BF1 so you're always first setting the tag then we're simply going to tell it what altitude we want it to fly at and we want to make sure it doesn't get uh, clipped by the towers or the trees or the hills so let's go a nice big 28 because it can dive bomb into the target later so that's not an issue so we'll go at least 28 for altitude that's all we have to do for the air state tag. Go to Stuka, do the same thing. Add and air state, double click, grab its tag, and Stuka, hit OK, and altitude will go another 28. Click OK. Now we're almost done here. Go back BF1 add the actual air attack uh, which is under actor air attack hit OK set the tag and BF1 now here it gets a little more interesting we want to make sure we have this all set up right so after you set the tag we we can set it to attack uh, different uh, other tagged items in the game but uh, since I got this information from uh, Stealth Bomber and uh, he's been helpful to many people in the community, I haven't really tested anything else. Um, I think I did a few tests where I tagged some items. But this system works so well with a large radius uh, waypoints. For me, it, it really gives me everything I need in a scenario. But there are other ways you don't have to use waypoints to do an air attack. You can use... Um, tags but let's do it this way so we want uh, we want the count of how many times the aircraft's going to attempt to attack with a weapon so let's go at least three okay sometimes it will fly over the target and not do anything sometimes it'll fly over the target and drop a weapon so we want that randomness it, it by putting three here it will drop try to drop weapons three times so I just find that this is a good number where I'm not sure if it's going to drop a weapon this time or not and I love how random that is so put in three if you can put in more or less click on move from back to checked force placement checked on random weapon you can turn it off and uh, I'll show you a better way to select it basically that will deter it will just pick a random weapon. Some planes only have one weapon, some have three. The IL-2 has three weapons, so you could hit this as random, so you never know if it's going to use rockets strafing or bombing on you, so that's another way to go. But in our scenario, which I will show how to select the weapon here in a bit, let's leave it on unchecked. Waypoint is your starting waypoint, so we know for the BF-1 it's zero. Waypoint to attack, we know that is 1. And the attack altitude from 28 is going to dive down to 12, which gives you kind of a nice effect. And sometimes it does it, sometimes it doesn't. But leave it at 12, that's fine. Click OK. We're all set up for the BF-1. Hit your Stuka and add the air attack. Double click. Set up the tag. Go down to Stuka. Hit OK. Again, uh, it's going to three attempts to bomb or strafe. Sounds good to me. Click, move from back, force placement, random weapon turned off. And starting waypoint is five. Attack waypoint is six. Attack altitude to 12 is good. All right, so now our scenario is set up. Uh, one other thing you can do is go to F1. Uh, let's just click off here. 
you have to go back to entities click off to get it unselected go back to one and if I select the BF 109 you can see that it's set up down here in the lower uh, left to be on strafing and so it's only going to strafe um, that's all the BF 109 really does in the game as far as I can tell I've been doing some tests where you know if you double click on a bomb up here it may bomb uh, I'm not quite sure if that actually works yet I thought I seen it actually you know that you could click on here and it'll determine what it'll use when it runs the script I'm still testing that though but for right now let's just double click strafing and make sure strafing's in this box and that's pretty much the only thing that the BF 109 will do is strafing but I'm working on that there might be a way around that then for the Stuka the only thing it has is a bomb and since there's nothing in the strafing thing here we don't really have to be concerned but if this was a uh, IL-2 we would have three weapons and we could actually tell it what we wanted to so right now we're good we're set up with the bomb double click make sure it's it's all set up there in our Stuka all right so go back to the the BF 109 now the BF 109 like I stated it's only I don't know why it has the rockets and the bomb it's it's not able to do it in game but if you had an IL-2 it will have the rockets and the bombs and the strafing in its interface in its inventory and if you if you are using the IL-2 simply set it up down here or up here to have rockets or strafing or bomb and whatever you set it as in game that's what the script will run when the script runs if you have that checkbox of random not checked um, because then it will use what you're telling it to use as you set it up in its inventory if you check the random box for a plane that has th three weapons it will randomize between the rockets, the bomb, and the strafing. Just wanted to make that clear. All right, we're all set up. We have delays set up on the first plane as 10 seconds and a delay on the second uh, plane as 25 seconds. Let's go way back to the other side of the map. And let's say we were going to run this. Let's just have a nice position here to view it. Let's go to turn off all the fog of wars and both sides visible and let's click start so now up here in the mini map you can always tell when planes start moving you should be able to see these two planes move in about the first one should and it just moved in it's been rotated and now it's entering that's why the rotate and place so now the first plane is working correct it's starting to fly that'll be the 109 there it is it's coming in that's working and that waited about 10 seconds to happen which is correct and the second plane, it's been about 25 seconds. The second plane from my mini map has started to move. The Stuk is on its way. So you want to make sure they're have you know they're far enough apart so that they don't collide with each other as they're going back and forth in their waypoints and doing their jobs. But here we can see the allies will try to shoot it down. Now this time it didn't strafe, but it, it'll come back and it may strafe. Here comes the Stuka. Oh, they might collide. Oh my goodness, that was close. And so they were both shot down. Okay, so let's stop the simulation at that point. So what we learned here is that the scripts were done correct the timers are correct now we want to just um, we want to set we want to tweak things a little bit and that's how you do it you go a little back and forth until you tweak it just the way you like it so we know we want their um, 
their delays set a little farther apart so they don't conflict. Their waypoints may uh, cause some issues there. So go back to F3. Uh, we can go uh, into the scripts. Go to the BF, uh, go to the Stuka and let's wait instead of 25, let's change that to more like 55 seconds. Maybe even longer. Let's, they still might on their one of their trips because they go back and forth. And you could set the waypoints farther apart too. You could use the whole map. So you just want to make sure there's no conflicts. Let's go 77. <coughs> So now <coughs> the Stuka will wait a little bit longer. <coughs> Excuse me. And the other thing we wanted to do is, um, I think there was something else I wanted to do. Let's go back to F1. Now, yes, what I want to do is turn off the anti-air so we can make sure at our side. So let's go to our side, um, go to the anti-air batteries, hit G, have them dismount. Um, let's see here, the bow force, hit G, have them dismount over there. I think that's most of our AA. They still may be shot down, but that's most of our anti-aircraft. Let's hit start and let's see what we get this time. Now again at the top here you'll see the first plane take off, rotate into position and come onto the, there it goes. The second one will be later. So that is working. There it comes. Now if you want a plane that does a lot of damage and you know the IL-2, I'm trying to keep it using just the German aircraft, but the IL-2 works really good for it, an attack plane with rockets, bombs, and strafing. It always makes an attack run almost every time. And, you know, you can get a lot of good gameplay using an IL-2. I wanted to use German planes for this map, so. But here comes the plane, first time around. It's close to where, and on this case, I don't know what shot that down, but it did a hell of a job. <laughs> Honestly, don't know what shot it down. I don't think we have any. That's quite amazing, actually. I'm going to leave that in. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what shot that down. Anyway, that's kind of a rare occurrence. Let's finish it and start it again. So what we have here is um, the plane. What I want to test and see in this scenario is where in those big uh, waypoint zones that we increase the radius of just how it utilizes. So let's, let's start it up again. Try to see what shot it down. Go to our side, check up what we got here. Actually, there's nothing really that should be able to shoot it down like that, unless that was just a random shot from a Piat or something or a bazooka. It seems to me that's kind of a, a real fluke, but who knows. All right, so the German plane is coming in. Here it is. Now this time, I believe our waypoint, the first waypoint is somewhere around here. So it's coming in to the left of the waypoint. Oh, it is, it is something being shot from over there. Something is like a bazooka or something shot. Rare shot, they got it. And you can see how our guys are spotting and looking at the aircraft with all those orange dots. That means it's being targeted and looked at strongly by our crew. So it's going to go back to its third waypoint. 
and then it's going to come back in and the second aircraft is now just taking it should be taking off shortly and hopefully they won't collide because this one's going to turn around and come back for another loop so the script is working well and also uh, I believe planes can spot for the Germans so uh, you can see the Germans are active because the plane crew on the radio told them that they're what we have all here so they're activated their ground forces are moving forward so the planes do act as spotters for both sides Comes the uh, Stuka. It may be high for a bombing run. It actually may be too high for them to, because uh, normally I don't quite go that high, but I didn't want to. So let's stop it here. And um, for the test, I didn't want the planes to crash into anything on the ground, so I, I set their attack height fairly high. This time I'm going to set it to about 20 instead of 28. I'm going to run it again. I think if they're too high up, their bombing reticule isn't able to see the ground. So that's my theory on that. Let's go F3. Let's go to the Stuka or BF1 first. Uh, Air State. Instead of 28, we're going to take that way down to 20. And air attack is still good at 12 for it's coming in there. So I believe it was just too high for them to actually get a target on the ground. And we'll see if this theory is correct. Let's run the scenario. Let's see if my theory is right. So first plane is coming in, should be lower this time, it is, hopefully it won't hit these trees, let's just see. Looks like it'll be okay, you might want to go 22 to be safe, 22 for height. Or you could always remove in F2, you could just make the tree smaller. You could make the hill a little lower. You know, there's ways to fix everything. Let's see what happens here. There. See, my theory I think is correct. Um, make sure your aircraft, their air state is not too so high that they can't get ground targets. So I would say anywhere probably 22, maybe even 24 is okay, but to be safe, I know that 20 is working and I've, I usually do around 20, 22. I made them extra high today just for we wouldn't have any uh, collision problems. So be aware of that. Now, the second plane should be going active and we'll see if it drops the bomb. So the plane flies over, the first round does a strafing run. He tells the Germans that, uh, listen, there's a force there, get ready. The Germans' ground forces are active. They're preparing, they're moving forward with their troops. Here comes the BF-109 for a second strike because they're set up to come back and forth. Now, you can see since the attack radius was fairly big, it was, I think, 600 for the first one. He is definitely coming in on a different... A little bit of a, of a difference, or maybe the same. Seems to me maybe a slightly different path. But this time he didn't do a straight. So with the BF-109, you get that randomness where you know it's you're not quite sure what they're going to do, 
and with all my tests I found that um, it ends up being a really nice mixture of randomness and predictability which makes the gameplay actually the maps a lot of fun. Now I would say there's a good chance that the, uh, the Stuke is going to drop a bomb because he, he should be at the proper... No, he's already somewhere. Did he already come in? Or did he crash somewhere? Where's the BF-109? I may have missed it. I don't see the BF-109. It, it may have hit something on the way in. Or it may have been shot down by friendly fire or... Possibly I just missed it. So I'm not going to bore you with uh, running this whole thing again. But you can, you know, I can tell you that uh, the BF-109 that this system works and it possibly hit a tree or was shot down by friendly fire or something. Maybe it was right in my face I just missed it, but this video is quite long at this point. Um, I think you get the idea of what we're doing here. Hopefully this will help you out and if you keep this video around you'll be able to set up your uh, attack, air attack scripting whenever you like. So. Give it a like, thumbs up, try to support the channel. Uh, I'm trying to get the channel to at least have somebody see these videos and that, you know, it'll be able to help people. So, until the next video.